Hi guys! Thanks for being here. This is going to be September favorites and I'm working them all into a full face look because I know you guys enjoy seeing them that way. It helps me explain things better if I'm applying the product as I'm talking about it. And um, I made a little list so I wouldn't forget anything. But man, fall's just trotting right along, isn't it? We're already into October now. Still haven't had a great deal of super fall-like weather here, but the leaves are falling everywhere. First thing, like primer-wise, this Milani Glow Drops Radiance Boosting Serum. This is really good. I've been enjoying this quite a bit. It's interesting because it doesn't come out looking transparent at all. It looks almost like foundation or something, but it actually just goes on the skin and feels like an extra layer of moisture. It feels so smooth too, in a way. It's kind of like it stretches across the skin, which is kind of an odd description, but that's what I feel I get out of it. And when I go on and use, like let's say, my Too Faced Born This Way matte, on top of this, I feel like there's a perfect fusion of textures there because I've got a mattifying foundation, but then my skin is like just super well prepped for it, you know? Nothing ends up looking too cakey or dry. The staying power is still amazing. It's not that it's glowy because it has shimmer. It's just like the texture it puts on your skin, if that makes sense. So um, oily skin probably wouldn't love this, but if you got dry skin, this is really nice. I just use pretty much one pump of it, maybe just a little more. It also smells just a little bit like suntan lotion, and I really like that. This mug has also got to be some kind of September favorite. How cute is that? I got it from Home Goods during my first experience ever at a home goods. Okay, so as far as foundations go here, um, the Too Faced Born This Way matte, like this has been a mega rediscovered favorite. I think this is so underrated. It's thin, it's full coverage, it wears amazingly well all day. Like it's the kind of thing where your look is really gonna be hanging in there until you take it off with this stuff. I love it, I wear it in light beige, highly recommend. Um, but there have been some days where I've wanted to go for a little more light weight look. Just try a different vibe with the face. And I've been loving my Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. This stuff is awesome. Don't underestimate. You're like, okay, I'm just going to get a tinted moisturizer. No big deal. This actually has some beautiful coverage to it. Not full coverage, but it does way more for your skin than you would expect. I mean, this one really has impressed me. It's oil-free. It does have hyaluronic acid and squalane, and I wear it in the shade light. So we're going to pop this on for you. No frills here. Just a little squeeze tube packaging, but we don't need anything fancy. I'd say I use a large pearl sized amount and then we're just going to dot it around like I do. And then I apply this with the brush um, just because sometimes beauty blenders can steal just a little coverage as they work the product in. This is like a little foundation blending brush from Profusion, but I want you to really look at what happens here to the surface of the skin as I get this in. It's just beautiful. And if you think about the fact that, well, I'm gonna pair a little concealer with this anyway, it's so perfect. Like any concealer you put on can really address those certain trouble spots. But this in itself, like look at what the whole skin is looking like with this. So as you can see, incredibly easy to blend in, does make your skin look and feel glowy. But yeah, huge fan of this stuff. I've really liked it from the beginning when I got it months ago, but I've been kind of putting it in the rotation a little bit more lately and I just think it's stunning. Now for concealers. I gotta say a concealer I've been using a lot lately has probably been this ABH one, just kind of in the name of testing it out. And while I do think it's brightening and it can wear a long time on me, I feel like it's one of the thicker of the, you know, full coverage, super full coverage concealers that are out there. It's one of the thicker ones. It wants to set just a little faster on the skin, which is okay if you're willing to work quickly with it, but it's not really like standing out above and beyond all the rest in some major way for me. So I'm not really going to call it a favorite, although I have used it a lot the past month. You know, I think I'm just going to go for my e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer here in Light Peach. This is kind of more like an all-time favorite, not necessarily used incredibly frequently this past month, but I'm just kind of filling in the blanks here where I don't have a distinct favorite of the month. You guys no. Okay, so dabbing that around. And I got this little Real Techniques brush that helps me blend. But you'll really see the coverage come together beautifully at this point because we've got that lovely looking like skin but kind of glowy thing going with the Wet n Wild. 
and now we're really taking care of like the redness around the nose or the darkness in the inner corner of the eye area. And I wanted to do a look like this too because I feel like if you want full coverage matte, you've got to check out my 90s supermodel video. That personally I think is one of my best looks that I've done, like one of my best on YouTube. I love the way it turned out. Uh, the products just came together beautifully for that one. But this is really a little lighter option in comparison and maybe a little more everyday. And still products that I absolutely love and use a lot. So all that's on my face right now is the Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator and the Wet n Wild um, Hydrating Camo Concealer. It's great. I love it. I've also been loving my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Powder. That's been still amazing for me on an ongoing basis. But a new powder that I have come into in the past month, and I talked about it in the Revlon video. By the way, did you miss that one? The Revlon Keller Stay products that still slay. The video nobody exactly asked for, but I thought you all needed. Um, Revlon Keller Stay Breast Powder, really good stuff. I wear it in light, medium, and I bought this because I was looking for some kind of little touch-up powder for the purse because you know, sometimes you just like to have the mirror handy. And then having some powder is nice for a little on-the-go touch-up. And while I do love L'Oreal True Match, I feel like with the manner in which I would need to apply that on the go, which is with a puff or a sponge, I will get way more coverage than I want. That stuff is borderline powder foundation. I've been saying that for years. Unless you have a brush to like really lightly dab it on to touch up, you're going to get a lot of coverage. So I was looking for something lighter than that, and I feel this is. Um, but I've been enjoying it so much up here as I do my actual makeup. I haven't really wanted to part with it and just leave it in my purse. But I do think it would be well suited to that because it's just a little bit lighter powder. Um, not going to lay down as much coverage as the L'Oreal True Match. But really enhances staying power. Honestly, you probably start the day with this. You won't uh, maybe be in as many situations where you need to pop on more powder. So I'm just getting everything set here because obviously with that combination of base products, I was feeling pretty dewy. And then you guys, I know I mentioned it on Instagram, but I don't know that I talked about it on here, but I was sent like a huge, huge bunch of Laura Geller makeup, including a lot of things I had never tried before, I'd never even heard about before. So I might be doing another Laura Geller video soon just to kind of like talk about some of these other things because they're very interesting. But a bronzer I have been using quite a bit is my Laura Geller Bronze in Brighton, which I've had for a long time here, and I've loved it for years. But I found myself reaching for it kind of interchangeably with my um, Wet n Wild Wet Shady Beaches. Difference between the two, I think this one has maybe a little more of a like reddish thing going in its undertone. Now I'm just going to hit the cheekbones and you can see that just contours beautifully and quickly too. And another contour related favorite that I'm really on the cusp of just loving and really excited to tell you about are the M Cosmetics um, new cream sticks. There's blush sticks and contour and bronzer sticks and they're so good. They're a beautiful texture formula. Here's a question for you guys. Do you like dill pickles or sweet pickles? I will tolerate dill pickles on sandwiches or whatever, like if they come on a burger, or yeah, I'll eat them. But really, I love sweet pickles. And I notice that they have these little, um, they're called snacking pickles. They're like little cups of sweet pickles, little gherkins, and they're so good. And I had some last night's like 60 calories for your little cup of pickles, and I thought they were just fantastic, so I would recommend those. For blushes, um, I've been really enjoying and using a lot and testing a lot these ones from Tarte from the holiday set, the Amazonian Clay Blushes, and there's a certain reason why I'm actually really loving these matte blushes, and it's because when you put them on, and if you add more of them at the end of your look, you really notice this. Um, you put them on and it almost re-perfects the skin. You know what I'm saying? Like the matte blush in, in an odd way, and I've never thought of blush this way, but it makes like the pore area and like up in here look more 
perfected when you use it late in the look or even you know as as you put it on you can tell a difference with that matte blush and I was thinking like I wonder if this works for other matte blush I recently got um like this one from Catrice and it's called Nude Peach yeah I didn't order from the actual Catrice website because it's looking very suspect how few things of the Catrice brand are being carried on Ulta's website but that's a whole nother story but I'm just talking matte blushes they can be beautiful applied in this zone and actually pay attention to what they're doing for the surface of your skin and just the perfected look of your makeup. I think I'm going to use a little bit of Charmed from the Tarte set and then maybe I'll use the highlight as well. The highlight's really pretty from this set. I do have a full review where I explain all the shades if you missed that, but all your blushes are matte. It's four matte blushes and then um, the beautiful highlight, but the effect a matte blush can have on the perfected nature of the skin something to think about. These are really pretty. The moment I put on blush every day, this is my habit time. So again, that is charmed. Look at the skin, looking good. Okay, and then we've got our little highlight that's just built right into the set. It's really pretty. It looks like kind of a soft gold, but super brightening. Are we feeling it, friends? I'm loving this look, loving it. For a little setting mist, um, I've been using my Belief Beauty mostly, it seems like. Um, this is my little cloud-like mist, okay? When you put this on, it's a very like soft mist, soft spray. So I use probably four to five mists of this. It's beautiful. I think I've been using this often because maybe a lot of times I've wanted like the matte perfected look on the skin. Like I don't want to look too glowy and too dewy. And this kind of keeps my makeup from going there because the mist is so fine, but I do believe that it sets things and helps the staying power. For brows, the duo that I've probably used most, and I really have enjoyed them, is my retractable brow pencil from Wet n Wild paired with my Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt. Um, this is a great finishing step no matter what. Like this is holy grail status. This is Emily Awards status. This stuff, I mean, th the innovative nature of this brush, like, I, I love it. It's all I want to use in terms of setting brows, really, because it does it the best, and as you'll see, the brush is perfect for it. This is kind of like, well, I've just been using it a lot, but it's not necessarily the best ever, just to be honest with you here, but, like, it does create a fairly effortless, you know, thick brow for me. So it's just a teardrop-shaped little applicator or shape of stick and then it has the spoolie on the other end and I've said it before I'll say it again it smells like my kids crayon box and yet it doesn't deter me from using it so there I am pretty quickly filled in and then I take a little brush I brush through that kind of ensures the evenness of what you just put in there and then we take the brow fast sculpt which if you wanted to use this and this alone, you can, because one side of the brush has very short bristles. Look at the bottom part of the brush. Short, short, short bristles. Top part of the brush has some length to it, and those bristles carry very little product, um, unlike the other side that carries more. So when you just want to help the hairs like stand up and be perky, you use the longer side and you will have enough product to like make them hold, but you know, you've already done your fill-in work, so you don't really have to use the other side too much. But you could if you wanted to, like it's, it's a great product. I wear that in medium brown, and I wear this in ash brown. Nice ash. Does anybody else feel like the, just the ethereal glow to the skin right now? Like some of it's that highlight that went on, but some of it's also just, I think the surface of the skin is just really beautiful. Wet n Wild, baby. Wet n Wild has really been my brand of the past few months, you know? Late summer, getting into fall. Like, I have just fallen in love with so many Wet n Wild products. You know, I'm really into their, just their regular foundation as well, the Photo Focus, or the Photo Focus Dewy for that matter. They're both good. Everything is so affordable, yet so good. Obviously there's hits and misses, but Wet n Wild's turning out a lot of hits these days. Again, we brush through your stuff's even and then we can just real quickly put on our brow hairspray. The way they made this brush, they took themselves 
in another category um, that goes beyond Glossier Boy Brow and goes beyond all the rest. Like, it's just a superb product. Like, I've been raving about it almost all year. And I'm still using it, too. There's another thing. Still plenty of product in here. This little tube. If we're talking eyeshadow, I've bounced around a decent amount. I've done a lot of testing with the Too Faced Forbidden Fruit Cake, and I do love it, but I just used it in the last video. So in terms of other things I use a lot, my Wet n Wild 10 Pan Palettes, always a popular thing with me. Milani Eyeshadow Primer, all-time fave. Just a tiny bit. So I am going to use one of those Wet n Wild palettes today. Um, I feel like I've just been wanting to veer toward anything warm. The warm, toasty, classic fall vibes. And I actually really like this one. Um, this was not one of the first that I got. This is actually one of the most recent that I picked up. Um, it's the Call Me Sunshine one. And it's so, so pretty. It gives you like sunflower vibes. Wet, or not Wet n Wild, ColourPop put out a sunflower palette and I think it was all matte, wasn't it? And it was this whole color scheme. And so this is kind of like a more multi-dimensional take on that. But yeah, I really like this one and I was wearing it in an Instagram post and I actually had quite a few requests to recreate the look. I'm not sure if I'll recreate that exact one or just do something similar. But first I'm gonna start off with just something really soft in the crease. I'm gonna go down here to this shade, it's kind of peachy. These 10 pan palettes, my friends, they are just amazing. Nude Awakening, there's like the classic must have. I like the one with the forest green, but this one too, like rocking a nice warm fall look. Absolutely. So this is just like setting up my crease. I'm just getting it going. Let's get it starting. And then we'll go slightly deeper. We'll go up here to this really pretty um, warm, like kind of, I don't know, is it honey mustard or is it more of a Chick-fil-A sauce? Now, if you don't like warm looks, I'm sorry, because this is definitely warm, warm, warm. I'm gonna go back to the shade I first put in there, and now I'm just like gonna make sure that gets on the outer edge of everything. Outermost edge with the peach. Then I'm feeling like taking a flat brush, going to dark brown, and just laying it down. And I'm really getting that over half the lid, maybe a little further and wedging into the crease too. I shouldn't have worn such a cool toned shirt with, with this, this warm look, but that's okay. Owls are hooting, and we love that. So now I'm wanting to go into the dark brown with my small pointed brush. Hit that crease area. And all I'm doing here is just getting the color put down in a little more pinpointed way, really blending the shape how I want it. And while I'm working with that dark shade, it's gonna also come underneath here too. There are so many different sort of vibes with the shimmers here. We've got like kind of medium shimmers, we've got really glitzy ones, a very yellowy shimmer, um, also a pearl up here. I kind of feel like seeing what this one's about because I don't know if I've even used this shade here. Definitely like kind of a dirty bronze and just letting some of that come here onto the lid. That would be a pretty one shadow look. I'm going a little bit inward with that. It's kind of catching the light a bit right there on the lid. And then I'm going to go in even further with the pearly shade. And you know, I can even use a little detail brush to get that right around the corner where I want it, where I want it. So this is definitely not the most glitzy take I've done on this palette, but it's just kind of natural and everyday and really warm and makes me think of like the leaves changing to that yellowish color. For liner and mascara, I don't really have anything new or different that I've been trying or gravitating toward, except I do really like this collection of the Kiss So Wispy um, lashes. The, the top one, Ritzy, is what I've been using most. I'm kind of curious. I want to try one of these other styles today too. So I think I'm going to go through and do those steps, pop some of these on, and we'll see what they look like. Okay, so I got the eyes done. Um, I use this style called Pompadour here, which is a lot like the number 11 below it, except maybe a little bit thicker. So it's a thick, not 
super long lash, so I think it's really pretty. I just, I'm, I'm enjoying this set of lashes. As the name implies, I like how wispy they are, you know? Now for lips, a few different favorites. I know I've mentioned these in multiple videos, but the Maybelline Superstay Matte Inks are great for staying power. Um, the shade called Enjoy the View and then also Live on the Edge are great for that kind of like deep neutral look. Kind of brownish nude 90s quality, love that. Also, I just wanted to point out probably one of my favorite things that I've worn recently has been the Milani Teddy Bear Lipstick. This was from the 90s look. This lipstick all over, which has kind of a cool, deep neutral vibe paired with the chocolate lip liner from Revlon. Those two together are just perfection. I love that look. And then today I'm gonna go with a deeper option. I got one of these Superstay 24 hour colors in the, what, what was their little sub line there? Was it like a coffee line, coffee themed line or something? But it didn't appear to be limited edition. It was right there in the whole setup. Um, and this shade is called Mocha Moves. And I love how deep this can look on the lips, but yet it will not budge outside the lips. It has the corresponding like balm here. My only advice with this stuff is it really is best put on completely dry lips, like with nothing on them. I feel like your prep work for one of these long wearing lip colors kind of has to happen the night before. Um, just sleep in a really nice balm, but make sure there's no residue when you go to put this on because um, that can really affect the wear of it. So we're talking like deep kind of rusty brown. I love it for fall. It instantly gives a more glamorous quality to whatever look you're doing. And this does wear really beautifully. You're just gonna let it completely set and then put your balm coat on. And while we wait for that to set, I thought it would add a little more blush because I was going on and on about how, you know, a little more matte blush on top of your look. Like, I swear, it just, it just smoothed out pores. <sighs> so pretty. Okay, I think we're dry now. And then we're just gonna use the balm. I used one of these super stays in like a reddish shade. I remember when I did the Miss Illinois emceeing and that was a great option then. But look at this beautiful fall color. You get to have the shine. You get to have the balmy feel, but that color is not gonna move. So friends, thank you so much for watching this video, my full face of September favorites. Obviously I had some other things to talk about when I had multiple favorites. I just tried to discuss them and mention them here, but you can only get so much applied at one time on one face. And um, I'm just loving that Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator for lighter days. Um, <laughs> you look at this face and you're like, oh, this is lighter days, huh? But um, you know, if you just want the lighter feel on the face, it's crazy how beautiful that coverage can look just paired with your favorite concealer. Set it where you most need to. For me, it's the under eye and T-zone and it will wear really nicely. Fall eye, fall lip. Thank you guys so much for your time today. I will talk to you again very soon. I love you. Bye.